coming out of my basement. Hey, we're live. Let's hey. start with that. It's That's show exciting. number two on Thursday night. I don't even know how to do an intro for this. It's Thursday night bonus. I think that's what we should do it as. Yes, Thursday, Thursday night bonus. bonus. Welcome, uh, mediums, to Thursday night bonus with Richard Fox. I am Josh Hayes here with uh, my co-host, Scott Moon. And his heater. And his it's heater because it's now. chilly in Kansas. It's freezing. Uh, we've never done two episodes on a Thursday night. This is going to be a abbreviated, abbreviated episode with Richard Fox. Hi, welcome. Hello. Always a pleasure. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Richard has been on the show probably more than anybody except for like us and only and because we host every single one. And that's the only reason. Yeah. Um, so we're doing this special show because, uh, Richard is releasing a brand new book in his Ember War universe, which is Iron Dragoons. And it's either out now or coming out tomorrow, depending it, it's on... It's percolating through the system right now. If you, if you go to Amazon and search Iron Dragoons, the two O's, Fox, it should pop up. And yep, I, got it, I got it pulled up. Uh, actually, before our last show, I pulled it up. Uh, Iron Dragoons, Chair and Armor Core, book one. Ooh. So uh, it is up. Very cool. Uh, Richard, if you wouldn't mind, tell our viewers and listeners a little bit about you and your writing to start us off. Sure. I'm Richard Fox. I've been a full-time writer for almost a year and a half now. And before that, I was in the Army for about 10 years and then spent a lot of time as an intelligence contractor, which is no fun. And, uh, and while my, you know, uh, my I was on a contract and that started to run out and then my writing picked up, and I was lucky enough that readers really enjoy the stuff I was putting out and it let, allowed me not to have to go find another job. So I got to write full time and I've been doing it for a year and a half now and it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I like it a lot. I write mostly military science fiction now. Now along with, you know, you can also put that into the space opera category. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first series that did really well was The Ember War, which is uh, which was nine books. And that's the last of that books. Oh, those books came out in December, and the last audiobook for that series just came out uh, earlier this week. So Luke Daniels and Podium Publishing doing a great job getting all those uh, titles out to earbuds everywhere. And so wrote the Ember War. And while I was, you know, when I when I wrote it, I had the intention of closure. That you know, this would be a series that has a marked beginning and has a marked end, and as I wouldn't go the, you know. Insert author here who didn't finish their series. <laughs> you know, we can all think of a couple. Dan Evan, who I love. Right. But, and so, but you know, writing this, uh, there were some characters who you know uh, really resonated with readers, and uh, one of them was uh, a group called the Iron Hearts, who are these uh, soldiers who are basically plugged in to these giant suits of armor, and they're a lot of fun. And every time they show up, they're going to be breaking things, and they're, they're very. You know, when we see the Iron Hearts, they're very they're formed. I mean, these these people have been uh, fighting together for a long time, and they, you know their character is basically set. And but you know th that those soldiers, the armor soldiers, you know a lot of people, you know really uh, glommed on to them. So when it came time, and, you know, and then when I wrote the Ember War, I had enough um, outs or trap doors so that I could come back to the Ember War and write more because. You know, there, there's more story to it. And you know, if you get to the end of the Zaros Reckoning, which is book nine, you know, you, you get you get closure, but there's still there's more problems. There's a lot more problems. And so for the Iron Dragoon story, you know, when we saw armor in the in the Ember War, they were formed. They're already badass. So for Iron Dragoons, I said, okay, let's take them from recruits and show how they go from, you know, just John Q public off the street to becoming armor. And you know, at the end of the first book, you know, they're not you know the, the the group of soldiers we see they're not as you know uh as tough as the iron hearts that we saw in the ember war they're going to get there but you know there's a there's a process they have to go through and a lot of character growth and uh interesting political machinations that happen along the way yeah so that's so that's um iron dragoons and that came out just now <laughs> and i um rather i'm proud of it it, it went pretty well there's, there's a couple elements in there that that you won't see in the Ember War books, but I'll let you read that and, and see. So, and then I also did another series, um, another space opera, um, military science fi called Albion Lost, which is part of the Exiled Fleet Saga. And that is, is very, 
it's very different. Much more, you know, galactic empires clashing with a, a an enemy that comes out of nowhere. And that book has done uh, really well. And you know, I had the you know the, the the fortunate choice of I should write this this Ember War universe story, which I know people will like, or continue the Albion Lost story, which I know people will like. <laughs> so I'm taking the risk of I'm taking the risk of of, of, of hopscotching between the two. Yeah. So you know, Iron War. The, you know, we have Ember War story. Now I'm going to go back and write another Albion story. I'm going to switch back and forth, and we'll see if, how many angry letters I get, and demanding to know when that next book is going to be up for either series. Well, so, which is a which, which is a pretty is a, decent, decent problem decent to have. have. Oh yeah, yeah. There's uh, problems to have. This is not that. So uh, the Albion Lost is completely different uh, story universe, and then but then the uh, Iron Dragoons is is like I said is related to the Ember Wars, but you could right. you should be able now. I I was able you let me beta read the the uh, the Iron Dragoons and it was pretty awesome, um, and I, I felt that you could read Iron Dragoons just as a standalone at this point. You don't have to read the the Ember War series to get into this book. You probably right. will want. To. Well, right. It's the, the way I, I, the intention was for Iron Dragoon is that if you have not read uh, the Ember War books, you'll be fine. There's enough exposition and enough hints, enough people saying, well, this happened then, that you, you can just go right through. If you've read the Ember War books, there are uh, Easter eggs aplenty. <laughs> and, 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 you, and if you've read the Ember War books, you will pick up on stuff a little bit faster. You'll, because you'll realize, wait a minute, that character is actually this person and when they're talking about that you know you know the background and at some point you're going to be like why are there toth in this book that doesn't make sense so <laughs> they will, it, it makes sense later on so there's some pretty so important it's, cameos in there i think yeah there, there's a lot of there's a lot of really good cameos from uh characters from the Ember war so especially standish who could not have not standish in the book you know, you know i uh the i i i got the advanced copy as well and instead of reading it, I dumped it into a text-to-speech program on my phone. So it's like I'm listening to an audiobook, but not really because it's a mechanical voice. And it's definitely nowhere in the realm of Luke Daniels reading me uh, Ember War books, which, which I think really puts a hamper on my enjoyment of listening to the book because I'm like, every time Standish comes on, and I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And then I rem remember that it's just this computer automated voice and i'm like oh well, that's it, sad it's funny though because i did the same thing and we learned that we learned that trick from one of our uh, previous guests uh michael tallman i always say his name wrong tallman 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 and he said he did that as an editing tool and i started doing that to get caught up on my reading but it's surprising how good stories are even just with the robot lady voice on your android phone you know it, they just they, they go they go pretty well so you mentioned that Scott. You mentioned that you could read this book without reading the Ember War uh, mm -hmm. books. Um, Richard, did you did you do that on purpose to to get another entry point into the series, or did it just? It come is, and them? it's it's um because if you, if you put up this book and say you're going to really like this if you read the other nine books first, <laughs> it's a, it's a big hurdle for uh, new readers. So I, I set it up so that you know, you can come in. And it, you know, there's a little bit more exposition if you've read the books, but it's you know, it, it should be. Fun. I don't think anyone's going to be like, you have to read the previous nine books. Hopefully, they'll get to the end of the Iron Dragoons and they'll say, I want to read the previous nine books, and then you know they can ca get caught up on those when uh, before the second book comes out. Uh, we had a question in the chat from Johnny. Johnny, I'm going to mess up this last name. Canuck, Canuck. Canuck. Well, Johnny K. A... We'll just say Johnny K. And he wants to know if we're ever going to know Standish's full name. I can't remember if you ever say Standish's full Mr. name or not. Standish. Uh, I'm not sure we did get his first name. But um, if that's a request, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Work it out in, in the next book. Oh, look at that. You heard it here first. <laughs> we're going to learn Standish's full name. Uh, want, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll work out in the future. I have... I, 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 I remember my notes what it what it is. So, but if I say it now, somebody will, will go actually find out where I did drop the reference and then like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> we, Matt, oh, Matt okay, we'll get to the same in the future. Matt, madly skimming through the books, trying to trying to re refine that. So, when you started to write Iron Dragoons, where did you start? I mean, how do you start a project like that? I mean, you knew you it were... was. Go ahead. Yeah. It, 
I wanted to start it where, you know, it's not, if I put it in the middle of the nine Ember War books, that would not work because then, you know, you, people are demanding to know where this goes and then it impacts, you know, other continuities. So the Ember War ends you, um, you, at a certain point where this colony ship is about to leave and Earth is, is, is uh, going through these jump gates to colonize different worlds. So it starts right there. It starts, you know, if you read the Ember War, the book nine, the, the Zaros Reckoning, you know, there's this, the, the very last scene, you know, the, the, the Zaros, uh, the Iron Dragoons starts about 10 minutes before that. So there's a reference to uh, Colonel Hale. He's about to leave on this colony mission. And in Iron Dragoon, you see Colonel Hale have, saying, having a goodbye dinner with, with Standish. So there's a little bit of handoff that way. That was kind of a cool scene. It was a really cool scene because you got to see, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah, spoil you see the words. main character of this book interact with main characters from other books, and you see them from a different, completely different perspective. And, and knowing what they've done in the past and knowing how Standish and Hale are and how they interact, and then you see them at this uh, restaurant from this, Point of view from another character and it's just a really cool cameo scene that you're like that's wicked cool but even if you haven't read the series you still can pick up on a little bit of um that these people know each other that they've been through a lot that they've experienced a whole bunch uh, which i thought was really cool and um you Whereas in, in your in your Ember War series, you are in the military and you're you're with these Marines and aliens and they are talking about everything that's going on and they're very knowledgeable of what's going on around them. Uh, and in this story, it's more of a I don't want to say Starship Troopers, but it's it's like a Starship Troopers or a Full Metal Jacket or something where you're starting out and you're going through the training, but the training is so mysterious that it's it's you don't know what they're doing and neither do the characters. So is that something that you did intentionally because of the mystery, the mystery around the armor you wanted to obviously unveil that slowly or what was your plan for that? It was, it was based a lot on us uh, army special forces training, which I've never been to, but you know, I, I've been around enough people who, who talk about it mm -hmm. and through army special forces training, you don't, you don't know what's happening next. I mean, they're there to, to test, you know, what kind of person you are when you don't have a checklist or a schedule to go through. So for this armor training, it's constantly, we don't know what's going on next. So people are constantly being thrown into new situations and constantly being forced to adapt because that's a lot what real war is like. He was like, oh, we're just, we're just going to go to Baghdad and everything's going to be fine. And then you get there and, you know, everything's been looted and no one has a plan. So yeah. not that that happened to me in 2003, but... You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. even, well, the, even the best laid plans yeah. go horribly awry. So it was, you know, but, but having that kind of training versus, you know, if you're somebody's going through boot camp where you know you're going to go to the firing range at this time, you're going to have to be here in this uniform, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, was, it was much, it was modeled a little bit more on special forces training than our regular basic training or special forces assessment, excuse me. And how, how far or how long do you see this series going? I've plotted out five books, and I think that would get us to the logical conclusion. So there's, there's, uh, there's some char characters from the Ember War coming back in book two who, um, you know, it's, uh, it, when, they, when these people show up, you know things have, have gone a, a very different direction. Yeah, so, exactly. So. Smart. So if you're a person that's living in, in, in the uh, Ember Wars world or the post-Ember Wars world and you're going to try out for armor, what type of person can, can make it into the armor core or even try out? Um, if you, for, you had to be a true-born person, which is a, is a plot point from the Ember War, but that's not. And what they're looking for is uh, people who don't quit is a big issue, is a big part. And uh, people who can you know, uh, power through really difficult long-term situations mm -hmm. so and if uh, also don't be claustrophobic because they put <laughs> you inside these little pods and and then drown you inside <laughs> the pod. So, nothing to worry so, about folks that would you know i think a lot of people hear that they're like i don't i don't think i want to do that yeah, so I'm you, you know you're going to be drowned inside this this very you know the, this liquid inside of a very tiny tube uh, a lot of people be like no yeah. oh. 
Yeah, maybe, maybe not so much. Yeah. Uh, Never well, mind. Bye. <laughs> and they're gonna put a plug in the back of your skull that goes into your brain, and it never goes away. So yeah, there's a lot. There's there's, there's a lot of hurdles for people to get over before they're like, yeah, I want to be in the giant armor suit. Well, and you know, it's like they're like the ultimate weapon of war. But in the Ember War series, you had Kaylin, if I'm pronouncing her name right, who was actually came to into uh, armor in a wheelchair. Right. And, and there's some talk about how, how that works. And then you have a character in Iron Dragoons who's uh, had some a lot of uh, catastrophic injuries from, and I may be pronouncing it wrong, and so, and what's the name? Sigler. Sigler. There you go. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of what I was getting at too in part is that it's not just like your, your, your track stars and your powerlifters and whatnot get to right. go in there it's it's more about like in your in your description it talks about find the, the iron within mm -hmm. um so what i think was really cool about um the training aspect or, or actually getting into the training is uh like when you talk about um let's just say seals okay because right. the seals are really badass to even get there first you have to be prior military uh, second, you have to have gone through all this stuff. You've got to be selected. You've got to be, you know, you've got to have a congressman basically say, yes, this dude's legit. He's going to go to training. And in for the armor school, anybody can just walk up and say armor. I want to go there. And it's, and it's cool that, um, you know, the, the recruiters or the, the people at the selection school, they're like, oh God, this guy wants to go armor. Come on. Will you please just go in the Marines? Because mm -hmm. please just go in the Marines. Don't go armor. And he says, no, 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 I want to go armor. And they're like, all right, whatever. I thought that was very cool, very well done because the armor is like everybody looks at armor. And they're like these badass people are, are they come in and they take names and they wreck sh shit. And when you get when you want to go try out for one, they're like, yeah, oh, here's another one that wants to be armor. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah. And it, it, there's some uh, there's some consequences and some some costs to that i guess we probably don't need to go into that because we don't want to do spoilers on the like literally five minutes after the book's been published <laughs> but but you know it's it's not a super easy there's definitely some some cost to that decision of, of trying to go armor if you can even make it uh vicky malone kennedy asks about the water she she mentioned when we were talking about being drowned in a uh <laughs> a box she said drowned to death and i said uh, no it's oxygenated but i i I spelled that horribly wrong. But don't ask me. Uh, it is kind of like the abyss, except in the abyss, you're in a suit and the water is just in your helmet. In this story, it is you are in basically what amounts to a casket that is filled with this water mixture. Amniosis is the word. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Amniosis. Uh, and yeah, I like the like the abyss. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, you mentioned Albion Lost. Uh, right at the beginning. Do you want to talk about that at all? Sure. It's um, this Albion Lost is much more about um, larger, you know, political organizations. And we have it starts off with the planet Albion, and it's a it's a strong, you know, well run planet with a king, and it gets uh, immediately overrun by um, a group of people called the Dagon, who we have not revealed their their whole backstory yet, and the next phase of this is the, the one fleet that manages to get away from the invaders goes and tries to uh, recruit allies to come back to reconquer their own homeworld. And that's the entire arc of the story is, you know, how does uh, Captain Gage, you know, get the allies and, and manage to get back to Albion? And does he even manage it? And when he does get back, is Albion even there to, to, to be saved? So now what's, what's now as for, for other authors, what's great about this is that now, this was a completely separate from the Ember War. Completely different physics, completely different universe. Everything is, is different. And when people read this book, I know there was a huge, there was a, there was a nice bump in all my all the people who went to go read the Ember War. So, in which so for for other authors who are out there, you know, when you put out something that uh, appeals to that same audience of a series you already have, you're, you're, it's kind of like you're putting out a, a, an advertisement saying, "Hey, you like this book? Go read." These other books, which are a lot like what you like, so, so for authors who are out there, you know, writing multiple series in the same genre is great because with the Ember War, you know, there was diminishing returns with every new book that came out, because I basically wrote, you know, book one, I wrote something else which did not sell, 
then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And with every book that came out, you know, there's still there's that peak and there's that, that that spike in a tail sales wise. Mm -hmm. And every time there was another Amber War book, you know, the, the 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 spike didn't go as high and the tail wasn't as thick as time went on. So now, and there may be some people out there who, who who have alternated books in a series before and they've had better results than I did. But you know, if for if you're going to write a longer series, you know, it's there's some efficacy to you know writing four or five books in one series, writing two or three books in another, and then coming back and forth, mm -hmm. depending if your if your readers will allow it. Because there's some people who are like, how dare you step mm -hmm. away from this story? Yeah. All right, like, <laughs> you know, and like I I listen to Disturb, I love the band Disturb, mm -hmm. and once upon a time, all these members in Disturb said we're going on hiatus, and uh, David Draymond went and did uh, Device. And they did an album, which I really liked. Really good album. But all of Disturbed's fans were so mad at him for taking a break from Disturbed that they, they, they you know, they didn't buy it and they didn't like it. And then the, the rest of the guys in Disturbed, they went and did their own album, and that didn't do good at all. And then they came back and they made it immortalized, and everyone's happy. So, <laughs> so for, for all of you who are out there, you know, you, you have the risk of, you know, do you step away now? When I was writing the Ember War, I had the, you know, the notion like, okay, I need, I should do this other series, and then it, I got to the end of it was um, check uh, the Siege of Earth, and boy, the Siege of Earth ends with to be continued, and right. I stepped Very away, <laughs> yeah, and said, okay, I know you're all waiting for this story to to end. Um, hold on for four months while I put something else out. <laughs> you know, pitchforks and torches. Okay, yeah. you know, I would have been good. I would have had to kick my own butt. Yeah. So and then I wrote the crucible, and I'm like, I had to finish. I can't do book eight, leave it at the finale, and then do something else. So, you know, I finished all the Ember War books before I went and did a different series. Yeah, because they're gonna go all multi uh, Monty Python and and come after you, and they want to burn you right. at the stake like a uh, like a duck. I would deserve it if you do something like that. You kind of deserve it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I have uh, read um, all eight, I, and I'm I have book nine ready to go on my uh, my uh, phone, the Audible version. As soon as I'm done listening to Iron Dragoons, which I will be done in an hour, according to the according to uh, text to speech, I have one hour left until I'm finished with uh, Iron Dragoons. I highly encourage you. Uh, listeners and viewers, if you have not read anything by Richard Fox, uh, either pick up the one of the one of the three books, uh, either The Ember War or Iron Dragoons or I'll Be in Lost. If you do the Audible versions, if you go for The Ember War for first, you get two books for the price of one. If they're still if they're still doing the publisher package, still doing that. yeah. So if you go for The Ember War and you like Audible. You get the first two books on, on in that series in the first in in one package. That's what I did, and that's that's how I got into your books. Uh, Richard was that that first uh, power pack. Yeah, and that this is another one where Josh handed off. So you got to read this <laughs> as soon as I finished nine it. I was like, Scott, later. Scott, you got to read this book right nine, now. Nine books later. Thanks, Josh. Um, <laughs> that was good. So uh, if you're watching or listening, go right now and purchase the Iron Dragoons book. I bought it. It looked like J.R. Hanley bought it too. So uh, thank you, J.R. He and said, you, he said, uh, now I need to explain to my wife why I'm buying more books and haven't read the ones we own yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally rational as part of it. Tell, tell her, tell her that the price goes up a buck in a week, so you're getting it on sale. So oh yeah, see bonus. You have to. Yeah. It's it's like you'd be irresponsible not to buy it right now. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm telling my wife. Uh, Richard, yeah. tell our uh, tell our audience uh, where people can find out more about you and your books. Uh, it, go to Amazon and type in Richard Fox in the search box, and you'll see my page. And if you want to get in touch with me, go to Facebook, Richard Fox author. That's the best place to find me, and I'm on there all the time. Unfortunately, I got to pull back to get more writing done. But <laughs> uh, come say hi. It's always a party. Awesome. Uh, well, everybody that hung out with us now for the second episode, this bonus episode of bonus, Thursday, Thursday Night, Night, Night Bonus, which could become a trend. I don't know. Ooh, I don't know. I like this trend. I like, I like it. I like the bonus. bonus. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for uh, contributing in the chat. Uh, the new viewers we have, Johnny K, because I don't want to mess up your last Johnny name. Canuck. 
and Walter Baxter. Welcome, as long as uh, as well as all the rest of our uh, regular viewers. Thanks for coming out and hanging out with us. Uh, we are going to call it here early for our bonus episode, and um, we will come back Monday. And Monday we have who do we have Monday? We have Steve Bell Bellu. I always mess up his name. It's Steve Bellu. Bellu and Aaron C. Hall, and they're the authors of uh, Brother Dust. Uh, that just came out, I think, uh, a couple weeks ago. Is Steve uh, did your lo our new logo? Ste yeah. Oh, yeah. Steve's the guy that did our logo. logo. We did. We got our new logo, and Steve did that. Uh, I thought that he did a fantastic job. So come by Monday morning and hang out with us while we talk to them. Uh, but, uh, Richard, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Okay, uh, Richard, hang out for just a minute. We'll uh, stop the show. Oh, Everybody sure. else, we will see you guys uh, Monday morning. Uh, come back and hang out with me and Scott. We'll talk about reading, writing, and everything in between right here on Keystroke Medium. You guys take it easy. Where's my mouse button? There it is. <laughs>